There we go. Okay. Previously on the God Breaking, um, your alternate characters are in Cragland, the dwarven, the dwarven nation, and you're up to some kind of some some hijinks. You're you're here to rescue Ari, the mermaid, um, girlfriend of Queen Delvinia. But you're while well, down here, you found out that the Darklings, denizens of the Underdark, are launching a full-out assault on the surface world. So the bulk of the party, so that's Gwen, Doucheface, and Brawl, you saw you fought um, like a scouting party of of Darklings, but you got you caught witness of the larger force emerging from uh, their many. Um, dark caves and and crags in the ground that kind of stuff brawl as you guys were retreating you let off uh, two long distance um sniper shots and managed to blow up like explode the head of the lead mind flayer the illithid that was coordinating this assault as a result of that the creatures ran, began to run around uncoordinated just full-on chaotic um destruction, rape, pillage mode. Meanwhile, off near town, Zalona was hanging out with Lizzie. Yeah, with Lizzie. You guys had ma had, had taken a, a romantic um, kind of floating floating evening over the, the the rooftops of the town, of the town of Tallfort, and you made your way outside of town to the outskirts. Uh, I think I said about a half mile or a quarter mile outside of town, and you had gone to Lizzie's um, cabin, her personal cabin. You hung out there for a while. You were starting to get romantic, but then you started hearing the sounds of of um, creatures arising and and moving in darkness and that and that kind of thing. So, in a moment of um, I don't know, just, just, just your, your idea for escape. You guys both polymorphed into badgers, dug in a hole in the ground, and finished your date there. Um, I guess it would be... So imagine if it was a, the, like we were talking about, the two candy bars being smashed into each other, but they're badgers instead. Oh, yes, I have a report for you on that, by the way. What's that? So, I did actually find a ruling on it. That had to do with polymorphing an object into a creature and whether it could mate. And the ruling was yes. The thing you would have to rule on as a DM is whether or not the fetus would be considered a part of the druid or not. If it is, then when they reverted, it would go away. If it is not, Wait, uh, then when they reverted, they would still be pregnant. A part of the what? If the fetus, if if the fetus is a part of the druid's body, uh -huh. then when they revert then the fetus would go away because they revert to their normal form. If gotcha. the fetus is not part of, which means, like, you know, in the initial part, it would just be an egg, right? So if the egg is not actually part of the druid's body, then when they revert it, they would still be pregnant. Interesting. Interesting. So I guess that that, Outs that depends on... Outside what... of that, it wouldn't really work because the, the, the ability doesn't last long enough for the ge gestation period. But if you, that the, if you rule that the egg is not part of the druid's body, then when they revert, they would be pregnant with the badger baby. Did you have to post this on like an official forum somewhere and got an answer? No, no, there was already there, dude. There is plenty of talk about it on the internet already. Jeez, that's crazy. Okay, yeah, all right, the, cool. The ruling from the actual people who make D and D was about someone had asked if you, you know, how I made those. The silver dragons with my pop, true polymorph. Mm -hmm. They asked if you true polymorph like a stone into a pig. Is that pig capable of having kids? And the woman is yes. Got it. Because you gain all of its physical abilities, and procreation is a physical ability. That makes sense. So. Well, in this situation, there there are two female badgers, so they are having full on lesbian badger sex. So there'll be no, no procreation involved. All right. So um, the rest of you guys were rushing back to town. You had to to fight off a couple of creatures and save some villagers as they were getting into the town walls. Um, but you managed to get into town itself. 
and they manage to, to shut the gates, but you see that the town is quickly being coming inundated by darklings just full on in rampage mode. There are creatures flying around the skies above the town, um, raining down horror on, on the guards on the walls. There are um, creatures, large creatures, full on bursting through, creating large cracks in the walls themselves. Um, on the other sides of town, there are small skittering creatures um, climbing the walls, and they're they're the defenses of this town. Even though much of the people have been militarized, were greatly caught off guard. Um, it's going to take a little bit for the dwarves to rally. Um, they might to, to be able to mount an organized defense, but as as of the moment when you get there, they are very much in chaos and panic mode. Okay, Zalona and Lizzie, you guys are still full on um, mid activity, mid 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 romantic activity. So the um, the sounds and stuff in the distance, they are less of a concern to you. Okay. Can you share the, Sounds the legit. Cabin? Can you share the cabin picture? I did it for some reason. Can you show? Sure. Okay. Yeah, Does that work? Yeah, okay. they do. All right. So, um, to the rest of you guys, you are in town. Um, you you in town right now, and there's um, creatures. Um, so on one side, you see a, a cyclops blasting into the wall. Um, let's call that on the south side. Um, you see a, a cyclops breaking into the wall. He's managing to put a big crack in the wall and keeps heaving his body at it. Um, eventually, it, he will break through on one, one section. Um, in another section, um, in, towards the, the north side of town, you see flying bat-like and manta ray-like creatures um, a handful of them swooping in the in the uh, in the skies, picking up an attack. Um, picking the larger ones are picking up dwarves high in the sky, then dropping them. The uh, the smaller ones are full on clawing and grabbing onto the heads of the dwarves and like sinking their their talons into the dwarves' heads. That's on one, another side, and on the, the the east side, you see a group of of um, like spined and um, weird, weird-looking creatures climbing over the walls of the of the town. There are a few dwarves on top of the wall trying to offer them resistance, but you can tell that they'll be overwhelmed soon. So, what do you guys want to do? Of those three threats, which one do you want to address? Yes, it's a big question, there, buddy. I have. Which one looks to be closer to, like, the most populated area? Um, from your vantage point, the Cyclops breaking through is is closer to a more densely populated part of town, um, and and more so, there seems to be a lot of creatures behind the Cyclops waiting for the the, the walls to be fully breached. I think we go after the Cyclops. Or I go after the Cyclops. Okay. Anyone else? Are you staying together or are you going um, yeah, we should to split up? Together. Okay. Alright, you guys rush in that direction. And let's do it like... Like this. We'll call this bottom portion the wall. This bottom row of oh, Zelona's not there. Okay. We'll call this bottom set of houses. All right, like this shit down here. We'll call that the wall. Okay. On the opposite side, there is a Cyclops pounding into it. And right through this breach right here is where the crack in the wall is forming. Um, there are dwarves around trying to 
to offer resistance but um, the, the and there's a few on the wall up top attacking the Cyclops and remember this wall is we said about 25 feet tall okay so that's kind of the situation be up on right, top you guys the you want to be like up here yeah okay so that's a two-story building you um we'd say that 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 building you're on is is shorter uh, like by, by about five feet than the wall top okay all right um so you guys roll initiative okay brawl as you guys approach you you scramble up onto the rooftop you can't quite see over the wall coming in but you do see get a pretty good vantage point of this crack in the wall and you can see this large eye um, attached to this hideous gigantic creature just kind of glaring through as he as it leans into the wooden structure and you can hear the wood splintering and bowing what do you do okay Go ahead, target him, and do your thing. Uh, so, would he technically, let's see, let me look at how this can be used. Uh, I have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in combat yet. Mm, no, I'd say he's definitely in combat. Okay. Well, no, he hasn't taken a turn in combat yet, but, like, because this is the start of combat with him, I don't know if that counts. I only get it one time, so that's why I'm just guessing. <clears throat> okay, sure. Go ahead. Because um, I, I, was, I was hoping that would negate the probably the disadvantage for trying to thread the needle through the crack and hit him in the eye. So You'll have a minus two, go. so partial cover, um, but you okay. can have advantage. Okay. Targeted to minus two on. Let's go shot. Oh, I rolled the wrong thing. Sorry. We'll hit back that. Yep, you got it. Uh, you hit. Yeah, you hit. He's is he engaged with anybody? <clears throat> like yes, these dwarves on the wall. Okay, cool. And that works. That will give me a sneak attack. Alright, so there's the first attack. Okay. Um, the arrow go, goes charging in. You can see him. Um, you, you can't really see his face super clearly. It was in the general direction of his eye, <laughs> right? You do hear a roar and, and like a howl on the other side. And um, he lunges into the wall itself. And you can see more cracking and splintering. Second attack of the minus two. Oh, that's definitely a miss. I was lucky that Yep. Shit. In the 28, is that hit? That does. Okay. Just. Okay. Alright, more, more, oh, more, Hold um, on. raging. Heal him, heal him back that 12. For some odd reason, I had the Hunter's Mark effect on you twice for some reason, and it should be on the wall. So, heal okay. him back those double sixes. And. I will scamper okay. more up to the very tippy top of the building. Is there any other building around me that's taller? Only in the center of town. There's a spire in the center of town that goes up about 40 feet. But that's, um, um, we'll call it 300 feet away. Yeah, that's too far. Okay, cool. I'll just chill out. All right. I'll come over here so I'm more like lined up with where it's nothing to crack him. That'll be me. Alright, douche face. Douche face, man. I went through Godlandia. I'm pretty tough. And I'll tell you what, I don't even know what it means. But I think your pie is going to get plucked. 
<clears throat> uh, you're behind a wall, so I'm not going to do shit. Um, so I'm going to start jumping back and forth and doing some sick dance moves. I'm going to do the, um, pretty much, it's the, uh, what's it called? The dodgy shit. But uh, I'll have okay. the daggers out, because uh, I'm going to go ham. Alright. On his turn, he surges forward, um, blood seeping down his forehead where, where one arrow plunged itself a little bit above his eye, right? And another one um, in the corner of his eye. You can tell his, his eyeball is filling it's, itself, his eye socket is filling with blood just pouring from these two wounds. You did not hit the eye proper, right? So you didn't burst his, but his, his vision is certainly obscured and he is angry. He, with a great lunge, he sh shoves through and splinters a gash in the wall. Um, this one dwarf falls down to his death. Um, and the Cyclops breaks through. As he does, um, you see several smaller creatures begin to surge forward and swarm through the gap. Like between his legs, um, smaller than him for sure, but they're they're lar they're they're what size are these? They're large to you. And one jumps off his shoulder and right up here. Up here. Okay, Gwen, you're up. I am going to cast <clears throat> Bane. Cast it at second level so I can target all three. And then what I'll do is get next to my buddy. Um, E-Face mm -hmm. and just prepare the attack. Is Bane an action attack? Is Bane what? Uh, no, nothing. I was checking to see if it was an action and I'm just checking for Okay. Yep, that's my turn. So at the end of your turn, Zelona, we're going to jump over to you. Um, Zelona, roll a... Mm, we'll call this a... Um, yeah, I, I like performance for it. We'll, roll, roll performance. I'm using favored by the gods. <laughs> okay. 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 So that's and I want you also to roll. I also want you to roll a Constitution save. Motherfucker. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, your performance is is um definitely satisfactory. Um, for some reason you are able to. <laughs> In badger form. <laughs> it is very chaotic. Very chaotic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of of scraping and and fur and claws and stuff. Um, but you managed to to do the to do the job, and um, you yourself are only moderately satisfied. You, 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 you know, you, you kind of got there, maybe, maybe. Um, I, yeah, it makes sense, especially since this is not like you know, my ideal situation to be in, and I feel like uh -huh. this is very not where I want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I yeah, I guess the instincts, you know, I just went with them, right? Oh, damn it. Yeah, and Lizzie, Lizzie, you can see her, her in her badger form. She's like rolled over on her back, you know, breathing heavily. Um, but now, but now, as you guys are calm, you hear the sounds of war and fighting off in the distance. But, you know, we call it a quarter mile away. So you're, 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 um, what's quarter mile is like, 
um, to the city. It's it's still it's loud enough and crashing and and that kind of stuff. You you, you guys can tell something is going down. All right. Um, I will see about like maybe motioning once we've caught our breath, motioning my companion Lizzie to perhaps you know join me in a burrowing to a bush um, with a better vantage point. <laughs> Um, Lizzie, Lizzie says that she, she did a lot of burrowing into a bush already and was, is wondering if there's another plan of action that you could suggest. Oh, God. <laughs> she says, I'm going to take the risk and just, like, you know, make my way to the surface. And, like, <laughs> we'll, we'll say, because, oh, God. We'll say that you and Lizzie can, can communicate in um in, in badger form all as if you're talking to each other since I guess badgers can talk to each other. She says Sounds is, good. She says, Is that an innuendo? You want me to go again? Into burrow into your bush, I mean. No 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 oh, actual bushes, bushes, uh trees, bush uh, oh god. I'm just gonna start making Are you sure? Making Follow me. All right, she starts falling behind you. You guys start making your way across the field. You're heading towards in the direction of the of the of the town, or where are you going? I'm looking for a vantage point, like some higher ground that we can get to to see what the hell's going on based in the direction of the sound. Okay, um, all right. So yeah, you find an outcropping, um, the, uh, the, uh, uh, a series of rocks underground that that raise the ground up a little bit higher, a, a moderate hill. Um, but from here, you can definitely see what's going on in town. You pop your heads up above ground, um, uh, um, taking cover by behind some foliage. You see the full-on assault of the town. And you also see that around you, mo moving through the dark, slipping through the shadows, um, creatures. Um, dozens of them and, and that you can see immediately in your area. Just from different angles, different directions, um, all flocking towards the town. Ah, oh, crap. Okay. Um, so I'm sort of, you know, like motioning her to, like, stealth back into our cozy hole uh, so that we can panic and in safety. <laughs> okay. Off in the, um, um, you, you head over in that direction and you hear some screaming and some shouting. And there seems to be an actual fight happening near you. You look over and you see a creature... in combat with some dwarves. So it's one of these creatures, right? Large, um, there seems to be a group of dwarves out um, fighting with it, skirmishing with it. It raises its pincers and it comes smashing down um, and and full on um, gores a, a dwarf. Um, you see blood spray everywhere and then it flips its hands and the dwarf comes smashing down near you and you can and you're looking and you see looking into the lifeless eyes of this person. Oh no! Pretty scream in the ward no longer. Oh god. Okay. Okay. Huh. Okay. Um, I can't do anything in this form. Um, so I'm going to turn to Lizzie and just go. Um, stay safe. I I'm I'm right here, but um. Good eye. And so I'm going to sort of... Can I drop it just on me? Or would it drop on both me and Lizzie if I drop the polymorph? Uh, I'll say I'll say if you keep concentration, you can still drop it just on you. All right. Um, I will do that. And let me see. Is there something I can use? Not really. Not really. Crap. Okay. Um, before I do that, I'm going to... Shoot. I'm going to look and see if I can find some cover for her, because I will need to drop it on both of us. So, yeah, I'm going to look for cover and then drop uh, concentration. Okay. All right. So behind a um, a series of bushes, like in, in a thick of some bushes, you, you send her there. And, and then I'm, I'm dropping it. Okay. And then when I'm... As I'm dropping it, I'm casting Hold Monster on the on the Chul. Okay. Um, so let's see if it'll hold it. And um, and yeah, I just want to stop it from smooshing anyone else. Is it a Wisdom save? 
Is that what it is? It's wisdom, yeah, wisdom. Oof. DC 19. Oh, 19, really? All right, yeah. it fails. Yay! Okay, um, so, yeah, I'm just like, um, I look towards the dwarves, I give them a thumbs up, and, um, then dash back into the bush and keep an eye out, um, for anything else. Okay, you see the rest of the, of the dwarves smacking the now um, paralyzed chul, or incapa yeah, incapacitated chul, and they're, they seem to be making some good progress finding its weak spots. All right, okay. yep. back to the town and the fight. Um, uh, in, in the meantime, a couple other dwarves have died. Um, Brawl, it's your turn. What, what's you do? My turn again already? Let's see here. Um, uh, I guess I'll just shoot the big dude again. Did you say he's made it through the wall? Yeah, now his upper his his whole um upper body is pushing through the wall. And he's managed to break enough he can't he's not fully through it himself, but he's halfway through it. Still trying to strain against the the, the planks and beams. But he's created enough of, of a gap in the wall that these smaller creatures are able to make it through. Uh, I'll just shoot him a couple of times. Um, you and those ones. I won't block the one that missed. I'm um, assuming he's still fighting with the, the thieves from the city. Yeah. I'm going to actually um, Hunter's Mark in this turn. Um, he's the one that hits. That much damage to the face, and it's all force damage if he happens to resist the unit. Okay. Um, and those little, whatever the horrors, are they down on the ground? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, we'll worry about them. Now we'll just chillax and here. All right, douche face, you're up. All right, I'm gonna start picking away at the smaller guys, and the damage dealers take care of the big guys. I'm not sure to take care of this bad boy. In this, but I need another one. Right Oof. Man, if those hit, that would have been like so sweet, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the, one of the dwarves look at looks in your, in your general direction. He says, "Hey," he says. Civilians and non-combatants should go inside. Leave the fighting to the the real men. Did you not see the invisible one that I got? Oh, I'm sorry that I'm trying to take care of you, bro. <laughs> he, he he pauses for a second, looking at you, and as he does, um, you see this hooked horror shove one of its its um its talons through the back of his head, and it kind of like sticks out his eye. He gurgles blood, and he drops down limp. Oh shit, that's really inconvenient. Yeah. So yeah, there was a blood spray right there. Okay. Um, this thing is going to charge you, the one that you tried to, to attack. It's going to come in. Two hook attacks. Oops, wait, what the shit is that? On. Hold on. Uh, I'm fucking dodging. Because I'm fucking badass. Oh, you're dodging? Okay. Well, it swings again. Actually, gives me disadvantage and a minus four, a minus D4 to attack. He's got, he's got Bane on him, too. Oh, no, duh. Okay, all right, got it. Um, So, yeah, he misses twice and is trying to figure out what the shit is going on. Um, This Cyclops lumbers through, shoving through a little bit more. As he does, you can hear the, the wall cracking straining and he comes barreling through now fully in front of you this um this hooked horror comes scampering out from underneath him the cyclops raises um one foot and smashes down on on the dwarf right here um splattering splattering gore um and um and bone everywhere. He just kind of like spat, splatters. You can see it like decorating the walls and stuff. 
and then he raises his great club and brings it smashing down towards Gwen. Gwen, 22 to attack against you. That hit. Okay. Slams into you. Um, you feel the brunt of the bludgeoning damage, and that is his turn. Um, this other one is going to go and tear at a dwarf. This hooked horror over here. The one on top is going to be fighting this, these dwarves up here. All right, Gwen, your turn. Hell on this guy. I'm gonna take Balinar and I'm gonna swing it on the Cyclops. I'll smite. I'm gonna attack him again. And then I'm gonna use my little horn thing. I'm gonna swing again. Hit. Take that, you motherfucker. Cool. And. That's it. Yeah, he's bleeding. Um, you can tell he's definitely wounded. Um, he's. He's, um. What's there are terms like bloodied is like halfway or something like that, and I forget what, what the, the descriptive terms are. Yeah, um, bloodied, he's bloodied. Is half, and I don't know the rest. Yeah, like critical or something like that. I don't know. Um, back to the top, brawl. What do you do? Um, I think I'll just keep shooting him. Okay. He looks fucked up, right? He's getting bloodied. He's getting wounded, for sure. Alright. Uh, shoot him in the... <clears throat> gonna shoot him in the eye again, I think. Okay. And two. Uh, hit and a miss. Okay, the miss does not, but the hit is is a solid enough attack. You, you're able to target his eye. Hell yeah. yeah. Then it wasn't a crit though. That would have made this even cooler. So 25 to the dome force damage. The Cyclops' head snaps back a little bit as his eye bursts and this viscous flu um, fluid begins oozing down his face. He roars and, and he drops... Um, his great club as his, and his hands go both go to his eye, holding on to the wounded, um, to his wounded face. In case he happens to see where that came from, yeah. I will use my book. bonus action to use second level spell slot in a misty step. You don't have the tokens left. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 30 feet over here, and then move 5 feet up into the top. And we'll say like 10 feet back. Just okay. in case he gets really pissed off. Alright. Douchey face. I'm gonna use my uh, cantrip level spell slide, and I'll be like, yo, Elwin, um, can you have me punch this dude? Because. It'd be a oh, sick fucking love bunch of guys. I'm gonna electrocute this guy. Okay. And then with disadvantage, because I'm gonna try to throw a an, uh, a little dagger up also into his eye area. That sounds okay. like a real good idea. That was a really Oof. bad idea. Who the fuck that? Okay, I'm gonna, I'll use a lucky. Just so it's not crazy. Yeah, I just don't want to have a real bad one. Um. He drops uh, all those rolls were shit, so none of them hit. <laughs> yeah, trash. 
the hooked horror is looking at you. It squawks in your face and it, it swings at you with its beak twice. Stop. And it's like, what the fuck? Oh, I, I you can't hit you. Fucking suck. You're just as bad as I am. It's getting, fr it's, it's getting frustrated. It's squawking. It's angry. All right, the Cyclops is stumbling about. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna tip o over in this direction. It's gonna slam its foot into Gwen. Gwen, its foot smashes into you. All right, you take this much damage. It trips, and it goes boom, crashing into this house, right here. Um, brawl, I need a dexterity check from you to see if you if you can stay onto the build on top of the building. As cause the whole building is coming down. If you can stay keep uh, from falling to the ground. What the hell? Dude's freaking psychic. Uh dexterity check you said or save? Check. Uh, <laughs> Okay, all right. You're able to to flip back um, and scamper across this adjacent house over here, and keep from from going down with this this the, the building you're on top of. The Cyclops is on the ground. It's bleeding from multiple locations. Um, it has a beam stuck through its chest. It is not completely dead yet, but it is close. Um, this hooked horror is going to rush at you, Gwen. gonna try to bite you or attack you with its hook misses misses does nothing all right go in your turn all right um kind of want to finish off the Now let me roll my okay. d6 for my fang. Okay, it did not recharge. What I will do... Yeah. If you're talking, we can't hear you. No, no, no. Give me a second. Okay. Uh, I'll take an off attack from that other Hokora, and I'm going to rush okay. at uh, the big boy. Misses. Okay. Take this. All right, hit the Cyclops. All right. All right, so he's wounded. He's he's impaled on a on a spike. How do you finish him? I run up um, his chest and I stab. I take Balinar, my great sword, mm -hmm. and I just shove it into his eye through his brain. Okay. And then yeah, you see, I pull, you it, see. Uh, I pull it out and then I swing at the at the hook horror next to me. All right. Um, it, d it ducks underneath you, but it is definitely intimidated. Um, with the Cyclops downed, you you um, you see, you turn and look around, and you can see that there there is definitely another wave of creatures coming. Um, so you've got multiple. Tool crowding at the um at the the doorway, um, and off in the distance behind, um, past the wall and past you know several dozen creatures that you can see from your vantage point, uh, from this now cre um, large enough crevice for, for the cyclops to pass through, you see an even larger creature in the background, making its way towards the wall, but larger than the cyclops was. <laughs> Oh, gross. Does Divine Sense take a bonus action or an action? Hmm. I don't know. 
uh, as an action. Okay, never mind. Okay. All right. Um, back out to Renly. Renly. Uh, Zelona is in a bush. Zelona. <laughs> Onto concentration on a hold monster, but at the same time, I'm holding hands with Lizzie. I'm pulling off my necklace and I'm holding our hands together. And I just go, Will you pray with me? Um, Lizzie is a bit confused. The, um, the first of all, the, 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 the chul is dead. All right, the, the dwarves oh, have made okay. quick work of it. Okay, um, Lizzie's there. And, uh, and she's looking at you, and she says, Pray, will ya? After all the things we just did? And she smiles. Oh. And, and, she says, and I'm just well, pointing towards the burning town. She says, Well, all right. I guess. You'll have to, t have to lead, though, because I don't right know what to do or what to say. Your, your your trust and belief is enough, and I just hold on to ha her hands while I hold on to my necklace of starlight from Rathorn, which I hope is magic, or at least can conduit something, and I'm going to pray to our ladies of, I'm like, uh, I pray for deliverance from our ladies, Mistra, Achilia, Rathorn, you out there? Um... That, that we may survive this night under the stars where um, a lot of us are dying, including Mr. Doucheface, who will never get redemption if he bites the dust. Um, yeah, and and um, we would very much like some assistance, please, so that um, a certain someone's lover, Ari, doesn't bite it as well. Um, you guys, you guys, I love you, you guys. That's me. Okay, um, so roll a a religion check, and uh, Lizzie, Lizzie praying alongside you will give you a plus three. Oh, okay. This is gonna suck. Twelve. Okay. All right, plus three, so it's fifteen. Okay. All right, you hold on to this necklace. So this ne necklace was gifted to you by Radthorn. And and it's not necessarily a religious instrument, more of a act there's actual like arcane power in it. But as a a holy symbol, right, it's it's not any different from a from a, a random necklace or anything like that. However, your prayers are earnest and Lizzie is there whispering beside you and she is she says, Amen and Amen. <laughs> Oh, and she, and she looks up at you, and she says, "Did it work?" I blink at her, hopefully looking up at the sky. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, you think you see something? You're looking up in the sky. You look for a little while. You think you you see something? It looks like a star flickering a little bit more frequently and brightly than it should. Alright, back to the fight. So, you guys, you, you're seeing a large number of forces. So, what you see on the map is just is just what I'm, what I'm showing. Back behind this wall, now there's a large there, there's a lot of creatures beginning to press through, and the Fomorian is looming behind the wall. Um, you, you can tell he'll be stepping through soon. What do you guys do? Houston combat. I am. Uh, if we're out of combat, I'd like to. Ca I'd like to use my divine sense. Okay. Yeah. We can. We can see you guys. If you guys are stepping back, unless you want to stay engaged in combat, I'll. I'll let you guys retreat, and and um, evaluate. Yeah, I just want to step back pretty quickly, and I want to see if these are celestial fiend or undead. Okay. Um, Deuce face, what are you doing? Are you staying in? Um, while he's going back, I, I mean, he's not going back far, so I'll kind of like hold the line, um, so he can cast his divine sense. Okay. So, um, you cast Divine Sense, and um, let's see, what does it do again? Can you link the ability? 
I'm going to see the wording of it. The presence of strong evil registers on your senses. Uh, until the end of your next turn, you know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet of you. There are no celestials or fiends or undead in the area. Yeah. No celestials, fiends, or undeads. These are monstrosities and aberrations. Is the is the other giant thing currently engaged in combat with anything? Uh, no. It's waiting its turn. It's waiting for the the uh, smaller creatures in front of it to push through before it it comes roaring in. I would like to assassinate it. All right. Or try it. Anyway. Okay. Um, we'll say that you're waiting. You're waiting now. Um, and um. Roll me a dexterity check to see if you can take advantage of the, the small window of timing. All right, you do. You have a moment, and you can get your two attacks off. It's on the combat tracker, so you can attack it if you want. All right. So while he's doing that, Deimos, what do you do? What are you doing? Or um, douche face. So while he was doing the sign sense, douche face would be attacking. Uh, I guess the hook force. He like so like. I'd be over here, kind of in the middle, just trying to like hold these guys off so he could uh, cast his stuff. Okay, very um, nice. I see that. Brawl. Uh, can we can we do something special with that since it's already an auto crit? Okay. I don't know. It's not baby. Is that? Yeah, it was an assassinate. Did you roll damage yet, or no? No, not yet. All right, that was two attacks, right? Yeah. Uh, the first one's a, a natural crit and an auto crit. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead and you have double crits. I'll let you roll a third damage roll, a third crit damage roll against it. Okay. Um, so we'll do, this is the initial one. So here's the initial one. Okay. That did not do it as a crit for some reason. Um, Are you holding shift? So, uh, I don't think I will shift. Uh, if you want to heal him back then, I'll do it right. I don't have you targeted, that's why I didn't do it at that point. Okay, good. I, I cleared that. Go ahead, do it again. Now you said hold shift, right? That's what yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, that's the first one. Um, and you said do another crit like that? Yeah. Because okay. you get two attacks, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I meant for the double. You said to do a third. Yep. It doesn't make all of my attacks crits. Only the first one. No, the let's, I'll, I'll give you three crit attacks. Th uh, damages. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So your first one was, was automatic crit. You rolled a crit. And because of that, I'll let you do one more damage because this was this was pretty crazy. That was a that was a really sweet roll. All right. So here is that thing we're doing, and then a normal one. I get it. Just four damage. Okay. And it didn't kill. It did not kill him, but the creature <clears throat> is roaring as three, three, 
um, arrows thread this impossibly small gap in, in vision that you have as, as other creatures are in the way. Um, you rapid fire them and, the, and um, strategically placed they're all in its face. Um, one definitely in, in this hideous looking eye. Um, the creature stumbles backwards and you hear an unearthly howl on the other side of the wall. That's okay. what I do for this little downtown. All right. Um, all around you, there are... Um, you guys see around you that there's the breaches in the wall and the flying creatures attacking have become more intense. Um, monsters are now actively swarming inside the streets of, of Talfort. And um, the dwarven people have organized a bit. They're mounting resistance. They've, t they've barricaded certain streets. Um, they've evacuated women and, and children, um, the ones who can't fight, to, to a larger structure in the center of town um, where they are, they're beginning to, to barricade and fight against, um, in, an, in an organized way against the, um, the monsters that are inside. But, you're, but it's rapidly becoming, looking like they are abandoning the defense of the wall as, as a lot of the soldiers on the wall are, di are dead or are retreating. Okay, so they're, they're, I they're, think, we, I think we should go back and try to find uh, the mermaid lady. At least we can try to keep her safe. I told okay. y'all we I should miss her as soon as place in the first place. But... Okay, so you guys um, you guys can retreat if you want. Um, I'm going to go Wait, back. Is Zelona actually back? No, Zelona? No, she's outside in the field. Oh, okay. I saw her yeah. and I thought maybe she'd be back. All right, so we're retreating, um, Gwen. That's the plan. To go find the mermaid chick and get her out of here. And that's what he said, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool Back outside, um, Zalona, you're seeing this twinkling of a star, um, and you're seeing it pulse more rapidly. And as as you see that, um, a, a beacon of light just kind of like uh, illuminates around you, and and you uh, and in that moment you see the vision of an ancient elven female, um, inundated with with silver starlight, um, crackling with with uh, um, electric power. As she appears, um, multiple creatures from out from the shadows uh, are drawn to the light, and they 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 surge towards you. But a field of of electricity just crackles through her and around her, um, shocking, killing, and rebuffing multiple multiples of the creatures around you. Um, she's created a, a barrier around you, a um, a wall that the that many of the darklings are not willing to um to to breach. A couple of them are brave enough to try to to shove through it, but they 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 die in the in the um in the electric fencing around you. Uh, the, the basically this this fence of electricity she's created around you, and she appears there, and she says, "Zelona, I heard you call." I am far away. This is just a projection of my being. I cannot hold it long, and the connection is tenuous at best. I have moved my platform to a plane far across the Astral Sea. But what can I do for you what what I can do for you, I will. Thorn, you're a fight for Thor. I said, um, "It's lovely seeing you again." And, and a tear is like going down my cheek as I'm like, "I'm not sure if the rest of the party is still alive, but uh, I I hope." But yeah, she says, "I cannot see from here where they are. Only your." Necklace, only as an was it a necklace I gave you? Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Only that gem allows me to see and communicate. You know I what? We're going to go there. You and 
this other. Oh, this Lizzie. She's she, a mermaid she at the at the at the city that's currently going down. She waves. She goes hi. Radthorn looks at Lizzie, then looks at you, looks back at Lizzie again, and she says, "Greetings." Um, Radthorn says, "What do you wish from me, Zalona?" Um, a bit of an assist with um some of the um you know, the overrun um, embarkments over there, but um, we'll get closer, so so hold on, and I'm going to um, turn into a giant eagle, and um, grabbing on to Lizzie so that she uh, will ride, and I'm going to head on over to the, the, the city, the town, as okay. quick as I can. You're flying? Yep, I'm going as high as I can, and then like I will basically close my wings and plummet down into the middle of it to avoid any of the flying embar embargo as such. Okay, um, roll a. I guess do you have the giant eagle um, sheet in front of you? No, I don't. Um... Let's see here. Here you go. I was like, something fast, something fast. <laughs> you see that? Yep. Okay. Um, so go ahead and roll me a stealth check as the, the eagle. Okay, stealth check that. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, you're, you guys are, are outside town, so so you're able to swoosh up into the air. Um, a lot of the, the creatures in the immediate, immediate vicinity are distracted by Radthorn's display of, of of light and electricity. So they don't pay much attention to you as you climb high up into the sky. And um, once you're over the town itself, you drop down in a dive and you're able to, since eagles do this kind of thing, you're able to sw swoop down and pull up in the middle of town without being much affected. Now down here, you're visible. So you don't have yep. much time before these flying creatures start attacking you. Indeed, yeah. And I'm going to yell, We're here! Um, like, in, in eagle form, which I guess she doesn't So, so what, you joined you joined a, the party? Is that what you did? Um, I'm dropping this sort of, like, I wouldn't have been able to necessarily see the party, so I'm yeah. just dropping um, into town as such, like, um, possibly near the closest fallen, uh, biggest fallen stuff, <laughs> because I assume okay. that's my party members. All right, you're looking for them. All right, back into into the town. You guys, um, so a couple minutes have passed by. What have you done in the last few minutes? Keep going to the mermaid's house. All right, you're heading off through the streets, um, navigating some corridors. Um, are you guys um, sneaking as you come across um, enemy or, or darklings, or are you fighting them? What are you doing? You come across the stragglers and stuff along the way. How are you handling the, the, the darklings that you encounter? Um, it'd be no use sneaking. I'm not very good at actually I'm horrible at it. Okay. Uh, so I guess I would just try to power through. Alright. I would All right, so I would try to be sneaky and use him is engaging them in a way to where I could like take advantage of their being distracted and like Kill them. Kill them. Yeah, cool. Yeah, sneaking across the rooftops as you are above them, you're able to have vantage points. Um, and between the two of you, between um, you guys on the ground, engaging in combat with these these random underdarklings that that come up, um, and the death that brawl is raining down from from uh, the rooftops, you're able to make it through the streets without taking much damage. All right, I'll say. I'll say along the way, Doucheface gets scratched up a little bit. He takes 14 points of damage. And Gwen, um, you get you get hit a couple more times along the way. You take uh, 17 points of damage in your journey. Um, you guys see that along the way there is a... Um, in the center town, 
you can tell that there's a, a big um, that, that's the inner inner defensive lines the dwarves have formed up around the central building where the um, the they're they're young and they're they're especially frail are inside and you can hear them shouting out orders you can hear squall shouting and calling out commands to the men um, as the the armed forces they they've they've erected um, crude barricades um, they have a couple of, of of larger devices siege weapons and stuff there but they've they've given up defense of the walls um, around you you see that at least two more Fomorians have pushed through the walls um, at different points and the hordes of darklings are full on um, breaking through and tearing and tearing apart the, the the perimeter the outer buildings and any any civilians that are are still unfortunate enough to be out there things are getting pretty dire you guys mm -hmm. scamper through the streets what go on are they coming through like the walls all around the city or more clustered in one specific part of the it's all around it's all around <laughs> yeah you guys um, scamper through the streets and you head in the direction that you recall um, Ari said that her her apartment was um, you don't have ex specific directions since you've never really been there before, but you knew the general vicinity. So you rush off in that area, fighting a few darklings, eliminating a few darklings on the way. I need you guys, once you get there, you're going to need to um, give me a, um, let's see, a search check. So give me, um, it's in the heat of the moment. So everyone give me a investigation check, or, no, perception check, perception check. You're trying to search for her, search for her apartment. Everyone roll one per plain perception check. I'm like really good at this. <laughs> All right, you guys are looking around. You're able to narrow it down, narrow down an area, um, honing in on where you think she might be. Um, Zalona, up in the skies above, um, you suddenly see. Um. Yeah, as you guys are all um, rushing towards this area where you hear some fighting going on, and uh, up in the skies alone, you see this at the same time, a crack of, like, kind of like an explosion. Um, but it's not like a bomb went off or anything like that. It's more like like a burst of, mag of, of magical power just, just, um... just, just blows off, just, just like, is, is released into the sky, right? Almost as if a magical device or um, an artifact or something was destroyed, and all its its the the arcane energy that was contained inside it um, just like released into the atmosphere. So it's it's a bright display of light and 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 like puffy smoke, but there's no actual explosion. It's just this, this bright display. Okay, and it it happens on a building in a building. Um, Zalona, you know, from where you are, you know, maybe a couple hundred feet away, um, the party, you guys see it, and you start rushing off in its direction. I'm dashing, hopefully I can get there soon. That would be like 160 feet, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you're swooping, you're, 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 you're moving quickly close to the, the rooftops, um, you're not sure if any of these flying creatures have seen you yet, but you guys all arrive at this house round about the same time. I'm keeping an eye out. Okay. And... One second. You guys all arrive at this place round about the same time. Okay, so what you're seeing here is that there are a bunch of of creatures in the area. We'll call it well, not another bunch, but a couple. This one is here. Um, I'll give you a couple of these guys. Yeah, we'll say it. it's it's about that. Oh, and also a what? 
I was like, this is a heads up. I gotta head out in a few minutes. I gotta, I gotta be, leave to work in like four minutes. Okay. We're almost done. But so, uh, so, one so of these. Someone can play my character though if you want. So. Cool. So you guys arrive on the scene at the same time, and what you're seeing is we we can we can role play through this. Um, what you're seeing is that. Um, the building has been assaulted, and the the explosion that you saw of of arcane like power um, occurred because this guy is fighting off um, these these um, these monsters that are attacking right, and behind him, like him, him there the and this 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 the wall is is broken open, so you can see inside this building inside this apartment. Ari is behind him, huddled in a corner, scared. Guglug is fighting off, wrestling one, this chul, right in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He's he's wrestling it, and um, on the ground, you see the shattered remains of an orb, of of scrying. Okay. Guglug is 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 holding his own against the chul. His torso is gashed open. He's bleeding. Um, Ari's in the back screaming. Um, it's getting pretty dire. The, this cloaker is on top of the of the building, trying to claw its way in, um, breaking through, ripping up roof tiles, um, smashing windows. It's 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 it won't be long before it finds its way in. What do you guys do? I'm fingling Radthorn with a weird, like you know, eagle sound almost. I don't know if she will get the fingle, but um, I'm trying because if we needed her power, this would be it. <laughs> Okay. All right. So Radthorn, um, you see and you hear a voice in your mind, um, Zelana, and she says, "Get close, gather tightly, quick. You will only have one one attempt at this." All right. And um, I'll pop in, and I'm going to uh, get rid of my form, and I'm gonna yell, "Huddle! Huddle!" to get the other food form. Oh wait, wait, hear me out on this one. Alright, I'm gonna go Misty Step, grab the lady, and do and then I'll action surge and Misty Step back so we're all together. <laughs> oh, that's pretty tight. Alright, so you're in the middle here on the map. You gra you Misty Steps in, grabbed Ari, Misty Step back where you are. Um Radthorn says Salona now I, I go, duck, um, duck, duck, and um, and hide, and then yeah, because we can't get okay. Duck. Yeah. In in that moment, what happens is very surreal. You feel that you feel the, the the your your um your amulet tingling, right? And it's surging in power. It's like it's like it's it's like this this activated sequence, right? You feel you've got like just about three seconds. Okay, a couple things happen. First of all, um, Lizzie, right, is then is is there with you, right? But bursting out from the bushes above you, a creature comes out and sm and grabs it, wraps its talons around Lizzie, and pulls her back towards the bushes. It, like grabs her and like 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 as if kidnapping her. Okay. Um. So let's do. I have a picture here. We'll call this Lizzie right here. Um. It grabs it her. She like screams. Hauled away. Yeah. Yeah. And he's hauling her away. Guglug is. We'll call this dude Guglug over here. Anyone have reactions for op attacks or anything? Guglug is fighting this chul, right? And he's wrapped up in it. Um, he's bleeding. It's um, it's holding on to him. Lizzie screams. Um, you guys have two seconds. Do you do anything in the, in the remaining time? Uh, can I hold on to um, Gwen with one hand and like the necklace is around my neck? And can I, can I hold on to 
uh, Luffy's arm with my other hand. <laughs> God damn um, it. So, so we're about to escape, right? Yep, you have two. This is literally two seconds. Radthorn has activated her, her, um, her teleportation sequence. It's it's honed in on Zelona's necklace. Zelona, roll a so strength like check. Two, is it like two Wait, seconds? Wait, you know what? Can I? Can I? Like if I have seconds, a few seconds, wondering... if I have a two few seconds. seconds, I would like to just have something. Can I? Like, I just want to cast banishment on, uh, twin banishment. <laughs> God damn it! I don't know. I don't know if it'll go off. So are but... are. Are you holding on to Lizzie, or are you trying to cast a spell? I'm going to try to cast banishment, twin banishment on um, on Lizzie and Goglug. Okay. Um, roll me so a dexterity they'll, check. They'll just come okay. back right here in a minute. Yeah, but hmm. that'll be after um the time that this goes Wait, off. Is Lizzie's your girlfriend, right? She was my companion for the night. Okay, cool. I will, I will, I will, I will amazingly swap places with her, and I will go over here and grab her friend, and then I'll misty step five feet back with her friend. Um. So you're gonna have to. So so she was Lizzie was close to where Zelona was, and this thing grabbed her and pulled her away from Zelona. So it wouldn't make sense for you to swap places with her, um, unless you're actually pushing Zelona aside. And barreling in to to try yeah. to get to basically yeah okay so you're rushing in to try to grab onto okay so this so this is the sequence of how it goes so Zalona you cast um twin banishment brawl make a dexterity check because this is less than a turn this is a fraction of a moment yeah yeah I yeah, know yeah this is a fraction of a turn so you guys do not get full actions for sure so um, brawl check. go ahead and make me a dexterity check. I'll use my last look in it. That was good. Okay. <clears throat> um, you're not going to be able to move, grab, and cast a bonus in the time. You can do two things. You can take a move and your bonus or a move and grab onto her or something like that. I mean, Daisy Chain, you know? Is Zelona close enough that, um, that if Zelona reached out Instead of casting her spell, she could grab onto her if the creature wasn't there. No, but I cast I cast a spell. I chose to cast a spell instead of trying to. Yeah, she chose to cast a spell. She's casting the spell. Her spell is going to go off in the middle of your of your action brawl. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a question. Is there a window there on this side of this building? High or low? Call high or low? Low. There's not. How about the building on the other side? <laughs> Over here? This whole thing is caved in. This thing, this whole oh, thing is. wall is broken open. That's why you can see um, Gluglug <clears throat> fighting against the, the Chul. All right, you gotta move. Uh, it's um. Is she, it, it, all right. right there. So this is what I'll do right. um, instead of casting a spell because if I if I don't think I can get there, um, she's been wrapped up by the horse, and this is just some normal bartender chick, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just put one through for him. You gonna shoot her? Yeah, I'll put one through for him. So she doesn't have to suffer getting eaten alive. All right, roll the attack. She is grappled right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Zelona, 
you hear you feel your your amulet surge up and the split second before it goes off you cast your banishment spell right you look up at Lizzie's face right and she looks scared there's tears streaming down out of her eyes she's she's screaming at you as this creature is clawing at her and pulling her back into the bushes um, you channel banishment and you see an arrow um, I'm screaming I'm into, screaming so badly plunge into in between her eyes just as she's before she's banished away and you guys vanish in a um a cloud of of bright light okay he's going to be one of the lucky ones in this town tonight uh, so, but i'm going to head out if it wasn't this new yep. random thing that came up like i'm kind of back to a schedule where i can like kind of stick around for a while but no worries man this is this is a good place to I'll end go it tonight post a video I'll see you guys. Yeah. Alright, guys. Later, dude. See ya. Sorry, Ridley. It was a mercy. Yeah. There, there was no way this town, unless there's somebody like, like, unless like our homies from the Magic College were to just happen to show up all of a sudden, there is no fucking way in hell this town is going to survive. It actually probably would have ended faster if I hadn't killed the boss. <clears throat> I thought Radon was going to be doing an energy weapon, but if considering that she's taken us away and we've lost everyone else, so yeah, okay. <sighs> oh, but at least your girlfriend isn't going to suffer a painful death now. That was really fast, yep. Okay. Fuck! If okay. I had more time, I would have done Helmy too, but... Don't worry. I don't okay. know. Would okay. I have had enough time, Midas, to shoot I need a week to recover, people. <laughs> <laughs> Midas, damn you, damn you, Midas. <laughs> Fucking Hokara. I don't know, Brawl. I don't know. We would have had to see how it went. We, I probably would have had you roll for it. But, all right. I'll okay. see you guys next week. Yep. Bye. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll survive since he got banished. We'll see. <laughs>